there was a, an article in the New York Times praising a book called The Victory of Reason. The writer was saying that there was a prevalent notion that the Middle Ages were dark ages. And he says, in this book, The Victory of Reason, the author Rodney Stark has shown that Middle Ages were some of the most important uh, periods in human civilization. As many people have pictured, Middle Ages were not dark ages. They were the ages, they were the period, centuries in which a uh, lot of, uh, the seeds of a lot of modern uh, progress were made. In fact, he is saying that uh, Catholic Church is responsible for uh, the creation of freedom, of equality, of uh, the spread of knowledge, and of also the abolition of slavery. And uh, he uh, shows how the ideas of St. Thomas Aquinas and Augustine transformed the world. And uh, uh, in uh, one instance, he mentions how uh, slavery was abominable to Catholics in the sense that one of the popes, Pope Callistus, who died in 236, was himself a slave. That shows in Christian history there was no approbation of slavery. And uh, in, in, similarly, in the field of knowledge, the monasteries did a lot in preserving uh, the uh, seed of knowledge. So he says, uh, Rodney Stark says, the idea that Europe fell into the Dark Ages is a hoax originated by anti-religious and bitterly anti-Catholic 18th century intellectuals who were determined to assert the cultural superiority of their own time and who boasted their claim by denigrating previous centuries. In the words of Voltaire, a time when barbarism, superstition and ignorance covered the face of the world. So in a way this is a very uh, informative book that shows how Christianity was responsible for many of the uh, good things that are associated with the progress and liberty. And this is a book that should be read by everyone who, who is much interested in the development of uh, the, uh, of the present uh, centuries. And also he mentions that the first two universities appeared in Paris and Bologna in the middle of the 12th century. Then Oxford and Cambridge were founded about, about 1200, followed by a flood of new institutions during the re remainder of the 13th century. Toulouse, Orleans, Naples, Salamanca, Seville, Lisbon, Grenoble, Padua, Rome, Perugia, Pisa, Modena, Florence, Prague, Krakow, Vienna, Heidelberg, Cologne, Offen, Erfurt, Leipzig, and Rostock. There is a widespread misconception that these were not really universities, but consisted of only three or four teachers and a few dozen students. To the contrary, early in the 30th century, Paris, Bologna, Oxford, and Toulouse probably enrolled a thousand to fifteen hundred students each. Approximately 500 new students enrolled in the University of Paris every year. As to quality, it was in these same early universities that science was born. Keep in mind that these were deeply Christian institutions. All of the faculty were in holy orders and consequently so too were most of the famous early scientists. So this in fact shows how the church was the promoter and the supporter of genuine research and scientific knowledge and uh, therefore we are really thankful to um, Rodney Stark for having brought these ideas uh, to the attention of uh, the intellectuals of uh, our present day world.